Hey everybody, and welcome back. A lot of folks have been asking me to do tutorials for flight simulation over the last couple of months that I've been on YouTube, and I wanted to make sure that if I was going to be a t doing a tutorial, that it was one that added value to the flight simulation community and taught something that hasn't really been covered in depth before. And so today, we're going to be covering the very, very critical part of aircraft operations, which is light management. Now, we're here in a Boeing 737 today, and it has arguably the most comprehensive and complex set of lights that uh, you can find in just about any aircraft. The reason why I did that is because not only does, it, does this allow us to talk about the five primary forms of aircraft lighting that you can find in just about any aircraft, but also talk about some of the more complex forms of lighting that you'll find in certain commercial aircraft as well. So let's go ahead and get started by talking about the five primary forms of lighting, and then we're gonna be taxing out to a runway to let you all see uh, these lights and the light management in action. So let's start on the outside. So here we are on the outside of our Boeing 737. We're parked at gate G112 at Copenhagen International Airport, or EKCH. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the various forms of lighting that we find on just about any aircraft. Those five uh, forms of lighting are navigation and or position lights, beacon lights, taxi lights, strobe lights, and landing lights. So let's start with really the one that is first in all aircraft operations, which are the navigation and or position lights. As you guys just saw, the navigation and or position lights just came on, and they are always represented by a red light on the uh, pilot in command or the pilot's uh, side of the aircraft, and a green light on the first officer or co-pilot's side of the aircraft. Now, the reason for that is very important. This is why they call them navigation and or position lights. It is because it allows other aircraft uh, pilots that are out there to be able to understand the direction of travel of the particular aircraft that they are observing. So in other words, if you have a aircraft that appears out on the horizon to you and you see a right uh, side of the aircraft that is representing a red light and a, a green light on the left side, you know that aircraft is actually heading towards you. The general rule of thumb that I always use is if red's to the right, it's not all right. If red's to the left, you can take a deep breath. So red to the right and green to the left means that the aircraft is heading towards you. And if you see red to the left and green to the right, it means the aircraft is heading away from you. But also some aircraft, such as the 737, actually just have white lights on the back end of the wings um, that also tell you the same thing, that it's heading uh, away from you. Now, navigation uh, and or position lights are operated at all times uh, whenever the aircraft is occupied or in operation. That means whether you're parked at the gate, whether you're taxiing to the runway, on the runway, or flying at any flight level. At all parts or at all times of aircraft operation should these navigation lights be on. Next up are the beacon lights. Now the beacon lights are typically represented by a uh, rotating red and or white beacon on the top or bottom or both of an aircraft. The 737 has a red rotating light on the top and bottom. And really what this indicates is that this aircraft is now uh, in some sort of hazardous operation phase. So this can mean a couple of things. It can mean that this aircraft is about to start its engines. This aircraft already has its engine started, uh, and or this aircraft is um, operating in some other phase of flight that can cause a hazard to uh, aircraft that are around it, um, and or ground personnel. So for example, if we were about to start our engines now, or our engines were started, we must have our beacon lights on to prevent one of these uh, poor ground crew from accidentally walking into a turbine. Also, if you're in a smaller aircraft, let's say such as a Cessna, and you're at a small uh, airport, and you're sitting there on the taxiway with your engine running, um, it helps other folks that may have earplugs in or maybe walking around uh, on the tarmac from accidentally walking into one of your propellers. And last but not least, uh, also in a big jet such as this, let's say we were in an airport where there is some general aviation traffic that's mixed in with commercial traffic, and a small Cessna was operating behind us, we wouldn't want that small Cessna to not be aware that we we're about to start our engines. We start our engines and accidentally blow that poor pilot over. So once again, beacon lights are operated during any hazardous phase of flight, 
in other words, whenever the engines are running or about to be running uh, at any time, the beacons must be on. Next up, let's talk about the taxi lights. Now, the taxi lights are a uh, relatively low intensity light that is uh, intended for use in a couple of scenarios. Number one, of course, it helps you navigate around on a dark or uh, dimly lit taxiway. But also, it's a way of uh, letting other pilots and or ground crew know that this aircraft is uh, going to be taxing and or moving around, and therefore it can also pose a hazardous situation. One such way that you would use your taxi light is once you back away from the gate and there's no longer anybody who can potentially be blinded by that taxi light, um, such as somebody who may be pushing back your aircraft from the gate, once they're clear, you can go ahead and turn on your taxi light and use it up until the point where uh, you enter your uh, active runway for takeoff. Now, um, another reason you'd use your taxi light is almost like a brake light. Let's say you have traffic that is going to be crossing the path of your taxi and you want to let them know that you're yielding to them. You would stop your aircraft and actually turn off your taxi light for that moment just to let them know that, hey, I see you and I'm yielding to you, you have the right of way. Once, of course, they've cleared and you are intending to start moving again, you'd turn your taxi light on and continue on your way. So once again, the taxi lights are used from the moment of pushback when the front landing gear or wherever your taxi light is situated, sometimes they're situated on the wings and or on the fuselage, uh, but once uh, there is no one that is uh, at risk of being blinded by that taxi light, you go ahead and turn it on. You use it all the way during all phases of taxi up until you're entering the runway. And you turn it off and on, um, whether you're yielding to traffic or you want traffic to know that you're the one who's having the right of way. Now we're going to talk about two of the more uh, dangerous forms of lighting, which are the high intensity lighting that are uh, included in just about every aircraft's lighting package. First of all, strobe lights. Now, strobe lights, as you can see here, are very bright, pulsating lights uh, that typically tend to pulsate at around one to two flashes per second. And they're intended to let aircraft know that uh, you are uh, on an active runway uh, with the intention to cross that runway or use that runway or take off from that runway. That is the only time the strobe lights are used. You do not use them during taxi. You do not use them uh, during um, your time at the gate. You only use them when you are intending to take a runway. Now that can include uh, taking off, uh, crossing a runway, or also landing on a runway. So for example, while we're here at the gate, we would keep these off. During taxi, we would keep these off. But let's say we had to cross a runway on our taxi route. We would turn them on while we're crossing the taxiway just to, I'm sorry, the runway, just to let any traffic that may be landing or departing on that runway know that we're there. And then once we exit that runway or we cross that runway's path, we would turn them back off. The reason why you have to use your strobe lights so carefully is because they're so uh, high in intensity that they have the potential to blind other pilots and, of course, ground, uh, blind ground crew, which, of course, can create a very hazardous situation. So you only use them when you're on a runway or operating on a runway, whether you're landing, taking off, um, or crossing that runway. You also typically put these on under 10,000 feet, as once again, if you're descending through 10,000 feet, it's because you have the intention to land, and once you go above 10,000 feet, you typically turn off your strobe lights. Last but not least of the five, and another high intensity and potentially dangerous form of lighting, are the landing lights. As you can see here, the landing lights are a very intense uh, lighting mechanism as well. The Boeing 737 has a little bit of a different landing light package than most aircraft, but We'll talk about the rules as the one you use uh, landing lights. Landing lights are only used during two phases of flight. Number one, if you're taxiing to a runway and intending to take off, you only turn on your landing lights when you've been given takeoff clearance. Not when you're told to line up and wait or position and hold, but when you're giving uh, clearance to actually take off is the only time you would turn on your runway lights. Another time you turn on your runway lights is typically when you're below 10,000 feet or operating within 10 nautical miles of an airport where there may be things such as uh, birds, etc. And you want to let your position be known in a relatively hazardous operating environment. Those are the only two times that you use them. You do not use them during taxi, while you're at the uh, gate, or in any other uh, phase of operation other than when you are taking off with takeoff clearance, you're below 10,000 feet with the intention to land. 
All right, so we've covered our five primary forms of lighting that can be used universally for just about any aircraft. Now let's talk about some of the specific forms of lighting that you'll find on the 737. Some of the specific uh, forms of lighting that you'll find on the 737 and potentially other uh, commercial aircraft are runway turnoff lights, which you see here. And runway turnoff lights um, are lights that do exactly what they sound like. They are intended to help illuminate uh, the turnoffs or the turns um, leading to and leading from a runway. So in other words, if you had just landed and you are going to be uh, taking a high speed turnoff or just any sort of turnoff from that runway, you could use the runway turnoff lights to ensure that you're on the uh, taxiway or on the transition to the taxiway. And these actually point uh, forward and away from the fuselage of the aircraft to light um, the taxiways that you may be operating on. However, once you clear those taxiways, you typically turn off these runway turnoff lights because they're relatively high in intensity as well and can pose a hazard. You can also use them below 10,000 feet as you have intentions to land as well. Uh, but those are really the only times you would use your runway turnoff lights. Another form of lighting that uh, a lot of commercial aircraft have logo lights. And logo lights are exactly what they sound like. They typically illuminate the logo on the back of the vertical stabilizer of an aircraft uh, to show the insignia of the company. You may see this for, you know, airline carriers, Delta, you know, United, British Airways, SAS, etc., etc., where while uh, they're operating on the ground in low light conditions, they'll put on their logo lights uh, to let other folks around the airport know that air, uh, that, uh, passenger carrier or that airliner is operating uh, out of that um, particular airport. Another time that you'll see logo lights being used is while you're crossing an active runway during your taxi. A lot of pilots put on their logo lights because if you think about um, a person who may be landing or departing from a runway that is being crossed, um, looking at the side of the aircraft they see a bright 90 degree um, view at the broad side of your vertical stabilizer, which is of course a, a great safety flag uh, to let them know that you're crossing that, uh, that active runway. So that's the logo light. Last, uh, we'll talk about the wheel well light, which you find on some aircraft, but one uh, that is uh, especially used on the 737. If you guys look, the wheel well lights illuminate the three wheel wells un underneath the 737. This is great for gate operations where ground crew may be working around the engines, working around the gear, working around the bottom of the aircraft, and also for the pilots as they're doing their walk around of their aircraft, it's a great inspection light uh, to help them do that walk around. The same goes for the wing lights as well, which illuminate uh, a portion of the wing. Um, so if your aircraft is getting de-iced at night, um, and also the inside of uh, your wings as well, I'm sorry, your, the inside of your engines as well. So. That's Lighting 101 on the 737. Now let's go ahead and taxi on out to the uh, active and uh, we'll see all of these in use. All right, so here we are on the inside of our 737. We're gonna go ahead and get her started for uh, pushback. So our APUs are actually running at this point. So we'll go ahead and turn on our APU. Our APU bleed is on. We'll take off our packs. We'll go ahead and disconnect our ground power. And we'll go ahead and uh, request for pushback. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and show you our taxi route that we'll be taking for this demonstration. And we're here at EKCH, and uh, we're at Golf 112. So, we wanna get out to uh, the active runway, which is 22 left. And to do that, we're gonna be taking Golf here, Victor 2, we're gonna be crossing 22 left, taking Victor and Victor 1 up to 22 left, and we're gonna depart from there. So you guys can see, not only we'll be taxiing, but we will be crossing an active runway. And uh, then we'll turn up, turn onto the runway and go ahead and take off. All right, let's make sure we're good to go here to start our engines. So we'll go ahead and turn on our fuel pumps, our hydraulic pumps, our packs are off, uh, our window heat's on. We don't have any passengers on board, so we'll leave that off. And everything else looks good to go. So with that said, since we know we're about to start the engines, let's go ahead and turn on our anti-collision lights or our beacon lights just to let the crew around us know that we're going to be operating here all right let's go ahead and release the parking brakes beacons are on nav lights are on they are aware that we're about to start our engines let's just make sure that we're clear 
Looks like we're clear. Let's go ahead and start our left engine. Take a quick look outside. You guys can see that our nav lights are on and our beacon lights are on. So this gentleman or anybody else who may be walking around the aircraft knows, hey, that engine is probably running on that aircraft and I need to steer clear. All right, left engine is started. Let's go ahead and start our right engine as well. engine is coming on. Looks like our right engine is just about started as well. So we're going to go ahead and turn on uh, our continuous ignitions. Go ahead and put on our generators. We'll turn off our APU as well as our APU bleed. We'll put back on our packs, our isolation valve uh, to auto. And we'll go ahead and turn on our uh, propeats. All right. So with that said, we're going to go ahead and put on our parking brakes so we can go ahead and get disconnected. Lower our flaps to five. So our takeoff flaps. We'll also set our takeoff trim to uh, five to four. That's about good right there. Now that we're pretty much ready to taxi, what we're going to do is a couple of things. Number one, as we talk about all the different forms of lighting, as you guys can see, the cockpit is very well illuminated right now. That's something you actually do not want once you actually start moving the aircraft because in low light conditions such as this, you never want the contrast to be offset where the cockpit is significantly brighter than the exterior of the aircraft because, of course, it's harder to see things. So once we have our uh, before taxi checklifts complete, as we do right now, what we do is we go ahead and uh, turn on our taxi lights first of all. So we'll turn these on. And then we actually turn off um, anything but backlighting in the cockpit. So there we go. Now you guys can see how much clearer and comfortable it is to look on the outside of the aircraft. We can still see the things that we need to see inside of our cockpit. But we're operating safely uh, by um, making sure that the contrast level between the inside of the cockpit and the outside of the cockpit are commensurate. All right, let's go ahead and uh, turn on TCAS. Give it a quick test. We'll turn it on here. And uh, let's go ahead and get to taxing. TCAS test pass. As you guys see, we have uh, two little trucks here. I don't know if they're moving or not. It's like they may be kind of stopping for each other. We're gonna go ahead and push right through the two of them. This is obviously not safe uh, taxi technique, but it looks like they may be glitched. So 
Sorry, guys. All right, so here we are. We're coming up to runway 22 left. And as I showed you guys in our uh, ground overview, uh, we're going to have to cross it um, to get uh, to um, Victor and Victor 1. So as we're getting ready to cross it, let's go ahead and turn on a couple of lights here. Let's go ahead and turn on our logo lights. Uh, and we're also going to go ahead and turn on our runway turnoff lights just so that uh, tack, uh, the uh, traffic is aware. We're also going to make sure that uh, our strobe lights are on and we'll go ahead and cross the runway. Let's take a look at what our aircraft looks like from the outside while safely crossing a runway. So as you guys can see, we have our runway turnoff lights. You can see our strobes are on as well. And you can see that very, very bright logo light is shining in the back, along with our navigation and our uh, taxi light in the front. So if an aircraft were to be landing and wasn't sure if, their, if the uh, runway was clear, they couldn't really miss us as we're crossing the runway even momentarily. All right. So great, we've crossed this runway successfully. So what we'll do is we'll turn off our uh, logo lights, we'll turn off our runway turn off lights, and we'll turn off our uh, strobe lights as well. All right, we're gonna make a turn here onto Victor. realize that we can go ahead and leave our uh, our logo lights on while we're taxing. No real harm in that. It's not a required light, but uh, you know, it's helpful at night. And we want to make sure we uh, do some free advertising for PMDG here at Copenhagen. All right, so very critical phase of flight here. We've already seen how we should taxi, we should back away from the gate, and how we should cross an active runway. But also now let's talk about how it is that we should properly use our lighting uh, while entering a runway that we intend to take off from. So first of all, once we've been given clearance to position and hold and or to take off on the uh, runway, um, you always start out with your strobe lights. And then of course, once you've been given permission to take off, uh, you go ahead and put on your landing lights. So we'll check for traffic. Go ahead and turn on our strobes. As you can see there. We're also gonna turn on our runway turnoff lights. We're gonna position ourselves on the runway, wait for takeoff clearance, and then we'll put on our landing lights. Let's take a look at what the aircraft looks like. All right, so here we are. We are now lined up on our runway. And once we have permission to take off, we'll go ahead and turn on our landing lights. So let's just say we just got permission to take off. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my landing lights. And although it is not necessary, you can also turn off your taxis. Now, let's look at the illumination dif difference between the taxi lights and the landing lights. Right now, you guys can see the uh, taxi lights are on and then look at the landing light, significantly brighter. Let's also look at that from the outside. So, taxi light, landing lights. All right, so we're pretty much set to go. Strobes, our runway turnoffs, our logo lights, our, our uh, anti-collision, our beacon light, along with our navigation and position lights are all on. Take a quick look at what that looks like. All right pretty much good to go. So let's go ahead and get the party started and uh, we'll go ahead and get ourselves taken off here. There we go, we are airborne. 
Positive rate of climb has been established. We'll go ahead and put gear up. All right, we're looking good. So guys, I really appreciate everybody joining me for this video. Look forward to some other tutorials that add uh, value to the flight simulation community in the future here. And until then, everybody take care and have safe flying.